Are we live? All right. So this has been my December month. Um, as you can see, I'm just going to uh, talk about this week right here, the seven, six, nine week. As you can see, kind of dropped off from the other weeks where I was pulling in, you know, roughly a thousand, thousand, thousand. The reason I didn't hit a thousand is because just got a little bit undisciplined on certain days. Like certain days, I was over trading, especially Monday and Tuesday. Um, Tuesday was a day where I easily could have, you know, made my average around probably like 500 ish. Mm -hmm. And I would have been right at my thousand mark. But unfortunately, you know, you make decisions, make bad decisions, you learn from, you move on. But uh, if I go into like some of the intraday stuff, <laughs> like you can see my 21st, the 21st, you see how much I traded compared to. Compared to you know what I normally trade, only yeah. like three, maybe at the most five times a day. But you see all of this, which was just ridiculous, and not even the gains were just not even good at all. I will say the good, the best thing that I always do is cut my losses though. Even with this 12 percent loss, like it it wasn't as much as it seemed to be, to be honest. Right. But yeah. more the great, my biggest thing of concern has always been. Just for the losses of the month, keeping them really, really tight, keeping those winners big. Um, another thing I want to go over too is just some of the new things that I added along with my trading stuff. Okay, so I added this um, chart correlation in our multiple, and basically this chart just uh, symbolizes the range, the price range that you get in at. So like if you're getting in at a uh below a, a dollar stock this is the type of you know gains that you're getting and as you can see like the hot the more expensive this stock is the less that i the, i will say the less effective i am in it right now currently in my trade career so uh, that is something that i I, I'm I'm cool. I'm good that uh, I'm glad that I uh, pulled up this chart and, and made this chart because it is recognizing like okay, this is an area of improvement that I need to make on. I need to be able to improve and adjust on stocks that are a dollar to two dollars, two dollars to three dollars, three dollars to four dollars. Because right now I'm only really really productive in stocks that are under a dollar, making those good little percent gains right in there. Mm -hmm. And also, it shows me just that all of my losses, besides this one right here, have been very, very tight. Mainly, mainly the mean of them is probably between that 0.5 line, which is something I really like to see. Also, seeing you know what is the hottest sector of the month? Is it healthcare? Is it consumers? Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> uh, technology, consumer services, and industrials, consumer defenses, uh, basic materials uh, if i want to go over important trades of the week i took a lot of trades here nothing too too important there's a whole lot of loss cutting which is very very important in a sense too but if i had to pick anything important of the week it would probably be from the stocks a b m l a l p p um CYDY, I'm going to go over that one. Yeah, those three. How was your Christmas? Oh, I don't really celebrate, but I mean, it was overall good, though. We, uh, Went to my mother in law's oh, house. Celebrate Christmas? Nah. But. I mean, that, that's probably the most cheapest way to do it, though. <laughs> I ain't gonna <doing> lie. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that sounds smooth to me. All right. All right. So we have ABML. If you look at this um, chart on the right hand side, you see that it's been a big, massive, massive multi day runner. Didn't nail any of it on this front side, which I do. Like, I consistently keep saying I want to get better at, and I will get better at, but, you know, it just takes time. But 
my biggest thing of the day was just nailing this first trick day on, on the uh, the twenty second. I no, was a little bit. Sorry. I was a little disappointed in it though, because I thought it was gonna crack below that dollar and just continue. Yeah, I, to go. I mean, it, 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 I, it, I told. I think I told you in chat though. Gave you the. It gave you thirty percent. So one yeah. point five four. As long as it gives you thirty percent, hey, you need to take it. And then that that psychological number helps too. So anything under one hundred seven or one hundred seven. Yeah, 107 and Lover. That was gold play because it gave you that smooth risk reward based off of history. But um, so I I really messed up on this trade, to be honest, too, though, because yeah, it was above a dollar. And I just went over that correlation chart, how have not been, you know, as effective or, you know, as patient as I should on these days. So on yeah on the twenty third right here, I got in uh, ABML. Um, yeah, I got in at one ten. At one ten, and I sold at one eighteen. And the reason I sold at one eighteen and got in at one ten is just because you see I was another case where I kind of didn't follow my plan. Where I clearly y'all just heard me say. 107 line and I didn't get in that 107 line I got in a little bit earlier and I kind of got I paid the price for it because I paid the price for it because you know I, I wasn't as comfortable with my average so I got in right around here right on this dip that bottom of it getting in a little bit too early because I saw that the level 2 started stacking right here and that was the pretty good reason for me to try to get in at 110 because I so I kind of chased it because I was just like I dang I really just did not want to miss this play right but even though I just because of like the historical this the historical edge comes from 30 percent line I chased it a bit because I was just like dang bro I've been waiting on this play for like freaking it felt like forever because it's been you know traded that um time and traded this feels like forever yeah it's been like <laughs> one two three four five six Six days, and it was just like, well, I'm finally, it's finally the opportunity right here. I cannot, like, I didn't want to, like, miss out on the opportunity. And that's the reason I pulled the trigger at 110. Got this 110 average. Gave me an opportunity to add right here into that 107. Touched all the way to a low of one. Didn't add. Got scared because, you know, I was just, just like, if I do have to cut, I need to at least cut. I think my, my loss was, like, 107. 103 and I was just like dang should I add right here should I cut by the time it happened you know I had to make the decision quit within three minutes didn't make that decision so I stuck with that 110 average seeing that the 101 well, I mean one dollar held so one dollar held created this lower low right here at 107 which was another opportunity to add right here bounce off that line key key important point right there didn't take advantage of that Saw that it started uh, turning right here, 118. So I sold for a small loss, because not a small gain, because I didn't want to sit through all that grind, even though it gave me another opportunity to add, not add, but um, get back yeah. in to confirm this higher low right here at 110. And because I had that ugly 110 average from beforehand, I wasn't able to see clearly of the chance, like, all right, higher, higher. Higher low right here, higher low right here. Okay, this is a chance where I can get my little ten percent move and move on. But uh, other than that, um, we had that day. Then we have. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm still looking for a panic on it soon. It's it's kind of been curling up, so it may still squeeze you to see on this half day where we didn't we lost all the volume, but it didn't die. And I know shorts were covered into it, and shorts still may be into it. So if it breaks over this 122 line right here, mm -hmm. it could give a nice little pop. But I'm not really – I don't think I'll play that pop. I, I'm really still just looking for another 30% penny. Um, And we had another one, ALPP. And this one, I know it's been 
freaking crazy. Like, this is another one where it's just like, where did this come from? So this one has just been running from three cents, and now it's at three dollars. So <laughs> if you had any type of patience and just got in right on this first green day right there, you'd be you'd be you'd be set <laughs> if you had a lot of shares. <laughs> But anyway, I tried playing this on the first red day. Um, the reason I expected a little less out of it and I adjusted on it and I only expected a 20% panic on it. But just because out of all the red days that it showed me, this was the most significant red day that it had. And on this red day, it only panicked about 20%. So that is the history of the chart showing you exactly what the stock will do on going into like, you know, the future future days it gave me a little hint right there if you would say so if it was only from 32 let me put a calculator i think it was 32.8 and all it went down to 26.2 uh went a little lower than that oh uh, you go to down to 22 oh oh this one actually did go 30 percent but it didn't. I, I don't know. <laughs> I thought this one would have gave me. It did because uh, I know what I'm trying to say. Because the stock has just been so extended, the higher the price, the lower per, in percent that I expected to fall. It, does that make sense? Yeah. Like just how um, you've seen how LK was the other day. Just because it's like a nine dollar stock, I don't expect the nine dollar stock to just fall thirty percent, like thirty forty percent, because that's such a long range to fall. And that's the that's kind of been the, the thing I've been working on right now is trying to you know correlate with these higher price stocks because they move in a such in a way where percents don't matter as much, mm -hmm. but. You, but they do matter in a way, but they don't matter in a way. There is more of a combination of using the percents and a combination of using the psychological numbers, like you know, two fifty, two dollars, three dollars, that type of edge. So on this first red day, we get uh, we get get a high of two seventy six, which was the high. Um, previous high of the other day so we see a, that double top in action because 276 was the high right here 276 right here finally get a first red day all the way down to two uh, and uh, yeah we get a panic below 20% which was cool below 213 right here and we're getting towards this psychological number it's been nothing but a straight downtrend from this panic. So I expected to play it on the bounce, which I did. Um, I got in right here at 204. But again, like, it was a big problem. It was kind of was fresh. This was the reason, like, I was um, kind of frustrated because this is a golden opportunity, and I did not take advantage of that opportunity. You see, I only sold from 204 to 214 even though like this was the setup that i have the historical average. edge yeah yeah like yeah like and it, it the, the most that i can lose is freaking two dollars or and at this point if it goes under 204 that means you need to get out anyway so your risk break even at this point yeah and patience patience was my issue on this play where i lost track of how extended this play was how big do I really think this bounce was, and do I really want to lose on this day? Because we and it came down to the fact was I really was not trading good on this day, and it it probably started from the last week where I messed up on. I think I need to go. Yeah, I'll go over see why I'm going out of order. But previous day I did mess up on CYDY, and it kind of traveled into day where I still made the same exact mistake where I needed to make that, you know, adjustment to like let my plan really ride out because I have an edge, use my edge. The worst that can happen in this scenario is that I break even. 
Um, and I didn't, I didn't use my edge. This was supposed to be a great trade and just basically a loss in a sense. Like, yeah, it's a game, but it's out of all of, out of all these, um, you know, charts, the, the most, the, out of all the like charts on my um, screen, the, the important games are the ones that are over 10, and, you know, over 14. Those are the ones really been making the month. And to have a game where it's just like, it's basically the same as the loss. It's kind of frustrating, especially on that setup. But, you know, it's still a part of the experience. You live and you learn. You just have to move on to the next day. Yeah. Um, then uh, just go on to that previous setup of CYDY, which happened the past day. And CYDY gave us that perfect panic. The reason I expected 30% out of CYDY, though, is just because everyone has... Everyone knows about CYDY if you're like in a trading community, and because of that, and because you know the history of it falling from ten all the way down to, I think it to four sixty five. Yeah, that was crazy. I knew that this this potential red day. It's not as extended as this day, but it'll still be a nice, nice red day. And as long as it goes under twenty percent from seven. You just have to pay attention to those psychological numbers because it does kind of have it does have you know some type of sense in this stock. So with this one, it was at seven. Uh, seven. It gave you that um, almost thirty percent crash, all the way down to five. So from five sixty, it was it was where you really need to watch it. They got on the 560, 550. So the next number was five dollars. Um, for a psychological standpoint, from under 560, and it just kept crashing, and it gave you that perfect style of penny. Yeah. And I got in at 511 right here, which was another perfect average, yeah, and I still. I was covering. Yeah, that's. <laughs> they couldn't get no better. Like I tried, tried my best to get in at five, but I mean, you know, it's hard to get that. But if you're in under from where the stock opens at, that means you you have a very great average in right. a sense. And you just need. This is a case where time is your friend. And in this scenario, I I recognize that right here, the 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 key point on this chart was 550 it needs to break over 550 for it to get running I knew that i could at least make 10 percent on this trade but i still just shook myself out i was just not patient on this trade and i think that it just was because of my size as you can see on my size i did um i did size up on this trade because i recognized that it was a great great setup and i'm not mad at myself for sizing up I'm mad at myself because I did not follow my plan and I trade to have a plan. Like, if I take a trade, I have a plan every single time. And when I look back at my stats and I seen that I was only risking $220 for a $10,000 position and I only made $432, that was a wasted trade in no sense because ideally it, the, I would be trying to take profits at 10%, which would be right around i'll say 563 so mm -hmm. this this is one of those trades where these are a standout trades that make your month five if i had sold where i was supposed to sell it, that's easily like a thousand dollars it's ten percent move trade it was quick easy money but i didn't follow my plan and now I'm, i was stuck with measly gains and that kind of followed trickled down into these other days um but other than that, uh, the only other trade I could talk about is I took a trade on OTI um, on this day, and I I couldn't I could, I don't think I could have played it any better. It just wasn't strong. So I've been trying to get better at OTC breakouts, and you can see that OTI is a clear breakout over this line, but with weak volume, which is the reason it didn't run that way, run that much. 
Um, I tried swinging some overnight from this previous day. It gapped up a little bit, but it went under red green. I sold right before it went red green. Um, waited on this dip. It bounced all the way up here. Then um, another thing that you could probably notice and take away is just how this chart forms and how it's not as liquid as other charts. You see how how loose the range is. How kind of space out it is in a way um, compared to you see it's DYDY where it was just like really really tight like every minute was very very like detailed but anyway I got in right here on this 0.075 dip getting right in under the breakout line which was like that was perfect perfect way I try to play breakouts and just trying to make 10 to 20 percent so my 10 to 20 percent from this 0.0775 line would have been uh right here at um 8053 and i saw a little a little bit right there i saw some at 877 because i just recognized that stock was really really weak especially when it broke high broke high a day and then still couldn't you know really get going so i knew i had to adjust my plans um I wanted to sell before 11 o'clock because I knew there would be a, some type of fade. And I did sold the rest of my shares right under here at like 10.0804 right here before it dipped out. And that one gave me a decent little game. It was just a single though. It wasn't any tune, anything too um, great, but it was cool to kind of play an OTC breakout in a way because I've been dipped by an all. And to finally get an OTC breakout to kind of work, even though it was with weak volume, was all right. It was cool to see an adjustment in my plans in my trading. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything else. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now. Get my share on. Wait just a second. All right, you can see my my screen. Uh, I'm loading. I'm joining now. Yes, I'm on. All right, for me last week was it was good and bad um for the most part um the bad part came in on thursday thursday um i was on a uh, few mistakes that i caught myself doing is using size on non a plus setups and that's one thing that i'm trying to trying to get better at as far as like when to use size when not use size um and I'm just gonna start off with the with the bad trades. So ALPP that was a bad trade if I could get to it. And this is one stock that I was uh I was frustrated by it from the day before and I even go over the day before trade um one thing about it i was mi um i was frustrated because like as soon as it went red uh and i and i consider this the second day red i'm sitting there trying to slam in shares trying to you know have full size try to get as close to the red green mark but it my orders wasn't filling so then you have this you know this snap right here then i'm chasing i add in shares right here I think I only end up getting like maybe um, I try to short 3,000 shares here, but I only get 200 shares filled and it's still going lower. So I move my order down and I put, I think I end up getting the 3,000 filled, but immediately after they got filled, I saw the stacking on the level two. I was like, oh crap, I'm about to get sweet. So luckily I was able to get out. So all my shares got out here. So it took a small win. Um, 
then what I should have did just got you know level headed and wait for this bounce here to re add um, but I did and I got in here uh, once it got below VWAP uh, full size then you have this this little <laughs> little shakeout thing uh, so I got out so I kept taking paper uh, paper cuts but at the end of the day the paper cuts they added up because on that day in total with all my trades not just with this one with all my trades I think I was on I was down like 800 something dollars which I can't do especially if I'm having a very gr uh, great week because at the time um, before that day I think I was up maybe close to five grand on the month um, on that week which was pretty good um, but I can't be taking big losing days or else you know that's gonna catch up with me um, so here's another trade I it got under view up again 3,000 shares um, then you have this shakeout so I'm getting out then finally I was like okay I'm gonna wait till this gets under this low right here then if it does I'm gonna go ahead and slam it because more likely it's gonna push through two get maybe get down to like the 180s 160s so that was my my, my uh, thought process again it started getting weak and this time I try to anticipate it but I only got a partial fill so again I'm chasing with size just to get this bounce so after you know this happened here I was like you know what I'm not gonna touch this stock again um, because at this point in time it's touching two dollars uh well close to two dollars this should be weaker this is the second red day it should be weaker um compared to where it came from if you look at the overall chart on it like this thing is super extended like looking at this this stock or let me get the view out removed All right, so where this stock is coming from is I mean literally it's coming from like 11 cents and at the time it was around like two dollars I mean uh, the daily VWAP on it have it listed for like 30 cents like this stock is super extended so I was thinking on this day that this should be able to come down and test like you know the 160s but it didn't it held up and once I started seeing this curling action, I was like, yep, let me not touch the uh, stock. And the second idea for it was, because uh, I was telling, um, I think some people in MIC, that this remind me of MMEDF. Um, I think that's the ticker. Um, especially the day before, the way that it just wouldn't die. It just kept, it was kind of strong from a uh, first red day. And the second thought idea is like if it goes green, definitely get in and go ahead and uh, and just join the trend. So here's the trend right here. And this was already pre-planned during pre-market. But since I was so frustrated with this chopped up action right here, I saw it go green. And I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to touch it. Which was a you know big mistake because you have this rip. I probably would have got out right around here in all honesty once it made the first red candle but that would have at least you know gave me uh, some of the losses that I took so that was uh, one of the trades uh, so that was really the most oh in ABM ABML this one I think I did pretty well just cutting the loss. Um, I actually took my eyes off of it. I didn't see this squeeze, this little squeeze, but this is the second red day play. Stock went red, got in here, thinking we're going to at least try to test one. Um, depending what it did at one, I probably would have got out. I took my eyes off it. By the time I came back, it was like up here. I was like, oh crap. So I just cut it um, since it. You know, got above uh, red green. 
So this one was pretty simple. Um, after that, I was like, I'm not going to touch it unless if it goes red, which it never did. So I did a good job of just overall avoiding it. Um, so that was, those really were my two, uh, my two losses. Um, with that, I had size. Um, I had 5,000 5, shares. So that contributed to that $800 loss on that day. And also the, um, well, really, what really got me um, on Thursday was not even a loss because my total loss was like 300 and something dollars um, overall because I was cutting it really quick. It just the over trading. Um, at the end of the day, like my ECN and my commission fee um, that was $500 just for commission and ECN together. Um, so that added up. Um, so definitely I got to recognize when to use size, when not to use size and stop the overall trading. Because if I'm, especially if you're losing on the trade, then it's not going to help out with those commissions. Um, so that was, uh, some of my trades now the best trade that I had um, which I even though it was the best trade that I had I was really frustrated with it as well it was CYDY and this was on the 22nd put this up CYDY let me see where I entered and exited at alright so I actually had internet issues during this trade. So soon as I got in, I noticed my internet, like the chart just froze. So I'm like, what is going on? Um, so I'm looking, um, looking at other charts. So all the other charts were uh, frozen. And I was thinking like, well, maybe it's uh, think or swim. So I hurry up and looked at my um, DOS, uh, my DOS Pro uh, chart, and that was frozen as well. I was like, man, you gotta be, you gotta be kidding me. So I'm messaging you, Rocky. I'm like, hey, my internet's messed up. Let me know when to cover <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Cause I definitely, I knew this was a great opportunity. Um, so as it kept going down, the internet would come back on, and I'll see the price it start ticking then it fr uh, freeze again so by the time I got to right here I'm like let me just get out some portion and just see what the rest does so I got out took a little piece still frozen took a little, little piece it came back on so like in between like it's unfreezing I'm putting in orders and from the time it froze like I'm putting like fantasy orders just to get filled which you know I'm glad some of this did and by the time uh, my internet came back up again, like I saw the thing was at like 550. I was like, oh no. So I hurry up. Uh, good thing they, there was this little snap right here. Like this little, I, I guess this was when you probably got out on this uh, yeah. little fake out right that here. Yeah, scared me out. Yeah. yeah. And I saw it and my internet was uh, working. So I had 2,000 shares left on here. So I just hurry up and got out. So overall, with this trade, I think I made uh, uh, like twenty, like twenty nine hundred, but it was pretty, pretty good. Um, I wish I would have got these two thousand just executed there and just got out all together, but um, I got out. What, hey, you like, did good with your coverage. Yeah, I, I was just putting fantasy orders. I was like, let me just, <laughs> just in case. Shoot. <laughs> But more importantly, though, like I really wanted to get in on this bounce because I remember last time CYDY, uh, the type of uh, bounce that it had, and I knew that okay, if I made, you know, if I was gonna make, because I was just aiming for like maybe two thousand on this. If I'm gonna make two thousand going down, I know I can make a two thousand going back up, and that was my whole thought process. But once it got the trade got here and my internet was spotty. I was like, nah, I'm just going to leave this alone so I'm not even going to mess with it. Um, but yeah, from what you could see, it got to the fives and got all the way. This is just a, this is a dollar bounce. 
you know get 30 cents get 40 cents get 50 cents with size i mean you're looking at a pretty good trade there so very disappointing on the bounce um due to the internet issue but overall i i do uh i did like this trade see i need to get better at capitalizing on this part because i'm a little scared because i'm not sure if it's gonna Ooh. do this and just bounce the first time it I mean, it makes a lower low. That's when you pull, like right under that six, six sixty. Like I right think it's six sixty. Yeah, right around there. The first, like the a, a little lower than that. Like right where you see where you covered. Um. Oh, from the first yeah, time. Exactly. Right. That is exactly where you should have entered again. Yeah. Oh. Because that's the first time it made a lower. Gotcha. Lower I mean, yeah. Yeah, for this right here, I actually did a um. Um, I actually bought the dip right here. Um, I saw it. Oh. It was good, like, stacking on the level two. Got in. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, I don't know. It's still up a lot, so let me just get out. <laughs> so yeah. <I> got out. <laughs> Quick scout there. But, yeah, because I see a lot of traders, like, they, you know, they typically capitalize in on these dips. And they'll cover right here. And if it hold, um, if it continue to keep going, they'll re-add on the short. So I want to get this action as well as this because normally I'm just waiting till like it goes red in order for me to get in. Because the whole time I saw this dropping. So maybe what I'll start doing is not maybe not get size. Get, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if I'm like doing. Like 30%. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm going to do, you know, 5,000 shares, 30% of that. And just cover here just in case it may want to bounce. And if it does continue to stay heavy, then just add in full size. And that way it could even drop my average. Or if, if I haven't covered here. But, but that's something definitely I do want to work on. Um, to maximize, you know, A plus opportunities like this. So that was uh, CYDY. Then we also had... Uh, Okay. Let's see. This I didn't get much size with it. Um, I think I got chopped around with this one. Oops. Yeah, with this one, I got chopped around, and, and since I saw it was still strong, I tried to short it because anticipating this break down, never did, and it just bounced, so I, like, got above VWAP. I didn't have much size. I just started, I put a starter here, and I was planning on adding more if it got red, but it didn't, so I just took a small cut there. Um... I want to say that's pretty much it as far as with the oh this trade ALPP now the one before was uh, the second red day that it made but the first red day this was really frustrating for me and one thing about it um, that I'm glad that I did on this which kept me in it a little bit longer um, Disappointed of not because I tried to get in here, and of course, since I couldn't get in here, um, I'm glad that I dropped my size. Um, I didn't go full size here, I think I only did 3,000. Um, had it been closer to here, I would have did, I would have been uh, trying to get in 5,000 shares because the overall risk, like for this type of first red day, I'm risking 300 bucks, but to possibly make you know a thousand bucks. To me, that's really good risk reward, um, especially if I size down as well. So with this, um, chased it a little bit. Finally got my shares. Then once I start seeing level two stacking, um, I got a, a piece because since I kind of figure, you know, this is not down enough for it to to warrant this bounce. So I'm assuming, okay, this bounce is gonna be. Um, 
it's going to be pretty much a fake bounce. So I got out and the idea was to re-add if it got here. Um, that way I could get my average up a little bit higher. Um, it didn't, it wicked up here, then it can, and we had uh, further downside. Um, and I just started covering in peace like on every reverse reversals to eventually when it got down to like the twos um, I didn't get out anything and I was like okay well 260 to 2 I mean that's a that's a warrant for a bounce so I got out the rest of my shares and I was waiting for this move um, I didn't see it when it got here because um, I think I got away from my computer a little bit that's when I want to say that's when uh, my internet was down so by the time I saw I did this and it was just hovering around here so I added on back the 3,000 shares that I initially did right here. Now this is the part that I'm frustrated about because in normal circumstances um, what I typically do is if the stock starts dropping especially on the second um, bounce I'm covering somewhere over here or over here or even over here. Um, what I didn't do is I didn't cover at all any of these areas because at some point I was up six, seven, eight hundred dollars on this play. But I was trying to think more big picture. Like, okay, this is the second day. Um, this is the um, the first red day of the stock, and historically, if I wait to end of day the stock should reach back at its low or actually crack its low at least from what I've uh, noticed so that was the big picture in mind that I had so pretty much the whole day I was up on this trade I didn't even take a piece off and to finally end of day you have this squeeze I'm like oh man you gotta be kidding me and the first thing that I thought was MMEDF because it did something similar when it tried to do its first red day and it just kept holding up and the fact that it kept holding up kind of suggested that I don't want to try to hold this short overnight so every time it starts dipping I'm just covering out so essentially on this play I think I only made like a hundred bucks when I was up you know around here six seven eight hundred bucks so I was a little disappointed about this trade due to the fact that I don't like to have big unrealized profits and me not take it so I know for at least for next time at least take half you know three hundred dollars is a lot better than making a hundred dollars um, I get it that was my overall picture you know this thing is up a lot um, historically it should finish um, close to its lows but this right yeah. here, I mean, this is low itself. It's you know, 215, 220. Like that, it's not far off from $2. But I think greed got the best. Well, I wouldn't even say greed. Um, I'm trying to be better because a lot of time, had I taken this and look at the end of um, look at the end of the day. And the stock is at like $2, 180 190 or something like that. It's like, man, I left a lot of money on the table, which I've done that a lot. And I always complain that I'm not sticking to my um, plan. So this time I actually stuck to my plan and say, okay, end of day, it just didn't work out. So, yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine with what you did. It just didn't work out. I will say the thing was just that the reason I think LLPP didn't work out was just because it only went down 20% instead of like what is supposed to be going down like on a real first red day 30% or more and because of that like that might have been the reason that you got that squeeze out yeah so so overall yeah, it was it was cool that you followed your plan though like there's nothing wrong with that yeah you know just take profits along the way when you feel nervous or you know yeah it, it it's disappointing as far as profit wise but like you said yeah I, this is like the first time that i stuck to my plan so i do see some progression there when i say hey i'm not gonna do this unless the stock do this because a lot of time 
you know, I'll take it. I'll get it here, and I'm already out right here. So, so still room to improve. Um, one thing I can say, like looking at back from our progress from uh, when when was CYDY it was like June. Yeah, and we said that look. Next time opportunities like that happen, we're gonna progress. We're gonna we're gonna be better. So one thing that I can say, we have gotten a lot better since the first yeah, CYD. Sure have. So definitely like seeing progress like that. We still have more room to improve, and that's the great thing about trading too. Um, you know, the more and more that you improve, the more dollar wise you start to see. So that's just a byproduct of you improving. So I'm very very excited about ALPP. Because I think it still may have, uh, you know, another red day uh, coming around, whether it's Monday or hopefully it keeps going higher. Um, and that way, the day that it finally do crash, uh, we capitalize on that as well. So that's pretty much it for me um, with, uh, with, my, with the stocks that I traded. You got anything you want to add? Uh, nothing in particular. Just take profits. Uh, profitable traders take profits. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it off there.